I will magnify thee, O God my King, and I will praise thy name for ever and ever. Every day will I give thanks unto thee, and praise thy name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord, and marvellous worthy to be praised. There is no end of his greatness. One generation shall praise thy works unto another, and declare thy power. As for me, I will be talking of thy worship, thy glory, thy praise, and wondrous works. So that men shall speak of the might of thy marvellous acts, and I will also tell of thy greatness. The memorial of thine abundant kindness shall be shown, and men shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is gracious and merciful, long-suffering and of great goodness. The Lord is loving unto every man, and his mercy is over all his works. All thy works praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints give thanks unto thee. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, Word without end. Amen. Welcome to our Eucharist for the third Sunday of Easter. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. There is one body and one spirit. There is one hope to which we were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. One God and Father of all. Peace be with you and also with you. Our prayers of penitence. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes as faithless and not believing. In your mercy forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. 
You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And a collect for the third Sunday of Easter. Let us pray. Almighty Father, who in your great mercy gladden the disciples with the sight of the risen Lord, give us such knowledge of his presence with us, that we may be strengthened and sustained by his risen life, and serve you continually in righteousness and truth. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And our first two readings. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Therefore, let the entire house of Israel know with certainty that God has made him both Lord and Messiah, this Jesus whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and to the other apostles, Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptised every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children, and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments, and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. So those who welcomed his message were baptised, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from the first book of Peter. If you invoke as Father the one who judges all people impartially according to their deeds, live in reverent fear during the time of your exile, you know that you were ransomed from the futile ways inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Christ, like that of a lamb without defect or blemish. He was destined before the foundation of the world, but was revealed at the end of the ages for your sake. Through him you have come to trust in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are set on God. Now that you have purified your souls by your obedience to the truth, so that you have genuine mutual love, love one another deeply from the heart. You have been born anew, not of perishable but of imperishable seed, through the living and enduring Word of God. This is the Word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. At that same time, two of the disciples were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? 
Jesus asked them, what things? They replied, the things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They went to the tomb. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised Jesus and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem. They found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our Gospel reading today tells the well-known story of the encounter on the road to Emmaus. When Jesus walks alongside two disciples and talks with them, but they don't recognise him until later. This story has always intrigued me. Just why didn't they realise who they were talking to? Why were they leaving Jerusalem? Luke doesn't tell us. But Luke does tell us, but their eyes were kept from recognising him. Were they so grieved by their experience and so sure that Jesus was gone that they simply didn't expect him to turn up? Did Jesus look different after the resurrection? Was his face transformed? Was he wearing a mask like some do today? We just don't know. Luke just doesn't tell us. But the story takes another twist. As they approach their destination, the two disciples notice that Jesus seems to be intending to keep walking. Where was he going? Again, Luke leaves us in the dark. They encourage Jesus to stay with them. They offer hospitality to one whom they believe is a stranger. They offer to be the hosts to their traveling companion, this new friend. But as soon as the table is set, Jesus reverses the expected roles. He becomes the host by blessing bread and sharing it. Now remember, they still don't know that they're dining with Jesus. Once again, they don't realise that their dashed hopes are restored in the resurrected body of this stranger. But when Jesus does the most Jesus thing of all, everything changes. He takes bread, blesses it, breaks it and shares it. It is then that they recognise him. It is then that their dreams are restored. 
Few things are more painful than dashed hopes. And so before Jesus interprets scripture, before he breaks bread, he does two things. He comes alongside them, comes alongside these forlorn disciples, and he asks them to name their loss. That's a pretty good pattern for us to follow. Before we talk, before we explain, before we invite, we come alongside and we listen. Naming our pain, our grief, our loss are essential ingredients to moving on. Not erasing them or trying to forget them, but transcending them so that they are no longer what defines us. Naming our pain creates the room to be surprised. The disciples are disappointed because they misunderstood how God was working to save the world. Expecting a God of power, they got one of vulnerability. Expecting a warrior, they got a suffering servant. And while it might be tempting to have a go for their lack of understanding, I think it's important to recognise that pretty much everything they had experienced or been taught made it impossible for them to imagine God's work in Jesus. Seen this way, Jesus' words about hearts, as foolish as they are slow to understand, are less rebuke than they are lament, grief at the pain they suffer. To put it another way, while the disciples may be disappointed because they misunderstand God's work, their pain and their grief are really real. And the first thing Jesus does is to invite them to name it so that there is now room to be surprised by God, by God's decision to show up just where they least expect God to be. And that still happens. When we name our grief, our pain, our disappointment, our fear, we find these things have less hold on us and discover room to be surprised, perhaps surprised for the very first time by God's presence, by God's love, by God's promises. That's a large part of what the church is about, to be a place where we can be really ourselves, honest and real. And by doing that, we receive Christ's healing touch, often through the kindness and through the love of others. Which reminds me, aren't we missing touch? One day. So perhaps what we need to do is to bring the things that we fear and that worry us, the grieving, the anxiety about coronavirus, the way we miss family and friends, a simple hug and a kind word. I'm sure that we can all think of many, many more. And naming these things as real and understandable and lamentable in order to escape the fear that these things are the only reality. And in this way, to make room to be surprised by God's patient and by God's loving embrace. Our world is a particularly scary place at the moment. It's obvious, you've only got to watch the news each day. But Jesus is still with us, still active, still coming alongside us in all our fears, and still he reveals himself in the simple breaking of the bread. Some of you are using these video services to share in bread and wine alone or who you are with. I encourage you to do that. By doing that, we can all be part of this Eucharist and receive Christ that we might be able to say along with the disciples, the Lord has risen indeed and he has appeared to us. And the Creed. We believe in God the Father, God Almighty by whose plan earth and heaven sprang to being, all created things began. We believe in Christ the Saviour, Son of God in human frame, virgin born, the child of Mary, upon whom the Spirit came. 
Christ, who on the cross forsaken, like a lamb to slaughter led, suffered under Pontius Pilate, he descended to the dead. We believe in Jesus risen, heaven's king to rule and reign, to the Father's side ascended, till as judge he comes again. We believe in God the Spirit, in one church below, above, saints of God in one communion, one in holiness and love. So by faith our sins forgiven, Christ our Saviour, Lord and Friend, we shall rise with him in glory to the life that knows no end. And our prayers of intercession, let us pray. Let us pray to the Father, through the Son, who is close to us now and always. As the risen Christ was made known through the breaking of bread, give grace to all Christian people through the holy communion of his body and blood. Forgive our failures of devotion when we come to his table. Even though our church community is being kept apart at these difficult times, Remind us that our Christian bond is strong and will keep us bound through our faith and our love for each other. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Open the eyes of those who do not understand that Christ is near to them, wherever they are. We pray that while all nations are suffering as one, it will bring our world together in a way that we could not have imagined just a few weeks ago. Through this global catastrophe, may the truth of Christ's sacrifice for men and women be known throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Guide us to discern Christ in all our lives, in our friends and colleagues, and even to those who we find difficult to love. Help us to keep alert to the needs of our neighbours, and especially to those who are vulnerable. Inspire us to share the good news of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray especially at this time for all those who work in the National Health Service and put their lives at risk to help those suffering from the coronavirus. Let us pray for those known to us and are in need of help or comfort. Here, in our own community, we pray by name for Avril, Claire, Matthew, Steve and Debbie Plowright. Maureen and Colin Stock, Susanna Fletcher, Jude, Michael, Michael Arnold, Maz, Chloe, Mandy Parker, Ken Randall, Vernon, Joe, Alan Goodyear, May and Family, and Peter Sharrott, John and Jill Neal, Margaret Creighton, Doreen Rendell, Toby, Daphne, Lorraine Perdue, Christine, Georgina, Bill Mavel, Patricia, Peter's mum, Becky, Braden, Charlotte Dunnell, Naomi and Daniel and Grandad, Kate White, Anne Ram, Howard Medley and Adrian Young. Lighten their darkness with the light of new life in Christ. Lord, 
in your mercy, hear our prayer. Abide with those whose days on earth are spent and who now rest in Christ. We remember particularly those who have recently died in bleak isolation, afraid and without the comfort of their surrounding loved ones. We remember by name those recently departed. Rose Jackson and on the anniversary of those who have departed, we remember Roma Yvonne Doe, Frederick and Mary White, Roy Parsons and Ian Waugh. Grant to all who have walked with him the fullness of his presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. that our eyes may be opened and our hearts warmed with faith, we offer our prayers. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. And the peace. The risen Christ came and stood amongst his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. And so as before, let's imagine those who would be around us at this moment in our churches. Let's think of them one by one, give thanks for them and ask for God to give them peace and his blessing. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God for ever. Blessed be God by whose grace creation is renewed, by whose love heaven is opened, by whose mercy we offer our sacrifice of praise. Blessed be God for ever. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks, almighty and eternal Father, and in these days of Easter to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your good works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your risen Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he 
who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Accept our praises, Heavenly Father, through your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. And as we follow his example and obey his command, grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us his body and his blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way after supper he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Therefore, Heavenly Father, we remember his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross. We proclaim his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension. We look for the coming of your kingdom. And with this bread and this cup, we make the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Lord. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Accept through him, our great high priest, this our sacrifice of thanks and praise. And as we eat and drink these holy gifts, in the presence of your divine majesty, renew us by your spirit, inspire us with your love, and unite us in the body of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, we worship you, Father Almighty, with songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. Lord, our hearts hunger for you. Give us this bread always. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia!
and the post-communion prayer for today. Living God, your son made himself known to his disciples in the breaking of bread. Open the eyes of our faith, that we may see him in all his redeeming work, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. You have opened to us the scriptures, O Christ, and you have made yourself known in the breaking of the bread. Abide with us, we pray, that, blessed by your royal presence, we may walk with you all the days of our life, and at its end behold you in the glory of the eternal Trinity, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. And the blessing. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia! The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. With the risen life of Christ within us, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. <laughs>